Hello, good morning. Thank you for tuning in to this Spiritual Scientist channel. I'm Victor Hamsa. So, today I'm going to be talking about parallel universes and um, something I call the Grand Conjunction Event. I guess I'll be calling it that. Maybe I'll change my mind and call it something else. But let's talk about it, shall we? So, um, what is the Grand Conjunction? What is the Grand Multiverse Conjunction? What is that? What am I talking about? So, uh, in a regular verse, unlike uh, what you might think of, uh, let's say you have one path in a mechanical uh, universe, you get uh, you're born, you live your life, you die, everything's predictable, everything's the way it was supposed to be, it's mechanical for you universe, and that's just the way it is. Um, now, in a type of Everett's uh, multiverse, every decision you make leads to another, could lead to another universe where those universe of possibilities are in play. So, for instance, let's play your, uh, let's say you're playing a game where, which I enjoyed, uh, Forza Horizon. Um, so, two specifically was pretty fun. Um, so, in the game, you decide that you're going to be driving a Lamborghini, and then all of a sudden within the game slowly Lamborghinis come into play and other race cars of that nature that you could race against. Um, so if I go back to the uh, garage and choose a 4x4 Jeep, then all of a sudden, uh, you know, there's other 4x4s that slowly insert themselves into the game and a minute later you'll be driving against all these other you know, Jeeps in, in 4x4. So, for instance, if you're going into alcoholism and everything's depressed for you, all of a sudden you'll be around depressed people, you'll see a lot of bad things, and that's what's going to happen. All of a sudden, if you start meditating and you start trying to be enlightened, you're going to be on the wavelength and getting more together with people that are more enlightened in more um, who meditate more it's just the way it is right so we notice this within our uh, framework reality what you put out there basically comes back to you it's uh, uh, you know Jesus said that um, you know be grateful and you know leave yourself open as a vessel yep got it so let's examine um, the Mayas said in 2012 that there would be the end of the world and everybody was flipping out. What does that mean? What does that mean? Um, now there's something um, called Project Looking Glass. Now I have no top secret clearance. I can't say any of this is correct. It's just rumors, hyperbole perhaps. But when you examine uh, the what they said in this Project Looking Glass, and I would say you should look it up if you like, all this is, it's a uh, supposedly a CI program where they were trying to look into the future. Um, well, what they said was that after 2012, I believe the date was, that they couldn't look into the future anymore. Um, that seemed like there was a grand conjunction event and all timelines kind of converged. So, uh, somehow the Mayas, uh, you know, thousands of years previously have said the same thing. So let's look at, <clears throat> I'm going to give you two examples right now of a grand conjunction event example. So we do have examples in our reality. They're almost comical, but uh, let's talk about them. And I think you'll really enjoy uh, hearing this. And uh, I'm not going to put forward the mechanisms of how this occurred or anything like that in this short video. All I'm going to be doing is talking about the Grand Conjunction event and giving you two quick examples. So uh, I have a 
I call him my friend, uh, makes videos, I don't know him, Untamandi, I believe I'm saying his name correctly. Um, a gentleman talks about the Mandela effects as well, and I, I think he's a nice guy. And uh, he talks about now the color saturations and differences in videos that they've been changing color. And he's named them after himself, which is channel, which give him all the credit you want. I believe he did discover it, so um, you don't give him the credit due. Um, and if you're interested, I could link you to his channel in the comments below. Um, what I'm saying is that he mentioned that Van Gogh, um, he's he's okay. He's an he's a uh, art appraiser, I guess. He has a gallery or something like that. The guy knows art. He went to art. He went to school for it. Like the guy's trained. He said that he noticed that Van Gogh had like I think you know I'm not um, an art historian. I try to be well rounded. Uh, did Van Gogh have 30 paintings, 60 paintings, something like that? Uh, they said now he has over 3,000 uh, paintings. And he said on his channel that he couldn't have lived long enough. They're all verified to be from him. He couldn't have lived long enough to do so many. It's just how would you end up doing so many paintings at once? It, it, it just doesn't make sense, right, for him. Because it, it, it really doesn't make sense. So, in essence, you could think of it like time would be moving sideways. So, with time moving sideways, there would be enough time because those other sideways times would converge and then you'd have more, uh, you know, more paintings in one multiverse when they combine. So, as we see with a lot of Mandela effects, we see certain telltales from our limited perspective that you say, oh, uh, this changed and that changed. Um, but that would be, uh, as we see with examples of Mandela effects happening with, uh, with, with, you see this flip-flops and everything else. What is that? That would be multiverses combining. Um, I'll give you another example of multiverses combining. I think you'll enjoy this one. Uh, I was looking at it this morning and uh, I, I just enjoyed it. I don't know why. It just made me smile. Uh, Nicholas Cage. So Nick Cage's name changed. Uh, that's a well-known Mandela effect for people that are into this kind of thing. And uh, Nick Nicholas Cage. Now I was, uh, you know, watching. Uh, what is it? You know, Netflix and all these other things uh, and then you know I see another Nick Cage movie I'm like no way did he make another movie back then that doesn't make sense there's timeline conversions so uh, I would urge you to if you want to know what I'm talking about look at the uh, what do you call it, the IMBD look at his look at his movie history for Nicolas Cage and so I started looking his movie history this morning and uh, I, I just knew that it, did, it didn't make sense to me how many Nicolas Cage movies there are I mean is this the guy hardest working guy in Hollywood or what because you would think uh, when he started doing movies he made one movie and maybe how could it be a brand new actors in two movies in the same year and then you're like Wow, I was like super impressed. The guy did three movies a year. Wow. And then I, I looked further at it and I was like, he did four movies in a year? Are you kidding me? That's crazy. And then I looked further. I said, wait a second. He did five movies in a same year. How is that possible? Okay. And now he's done six movies in a year okay so not just one year multiple years he's had six movies in the same year um so i'll use that as an example for what i'm calling the grand uh multiverse convergence or 
however you want to say it. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments. I'm not going to speak too much about the mechanisms, about what I think's behind it, but uh, I'm just talking about this in general to put the idea out there to give you a reference point so people uh, get do get upset about certain things and they don't understand. So I'm trying to um, you know put that out there. See, so this is my grand multiverse theory. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments. Like, subscribe, share. I love you guys. Thanks a lot. Have a great day. Bye-bye.